All right, good afternoon. We are cutting away from that press conference because we did get the uh, four o'clock advisory in from the National Hurricane Center. Uh, no major changes other than a little bit of a surprise. It is still a tropical storm. So what we've been watching on satellite is that entrainment of dry air that we have been saying from yesterday was going to cause some major issues with regards to the storm trying to further strengthen. That thankfully has been working very much in our favor, though it does put a little bit of confusion in the computer models, which is why we we tend to see a little bit of these jogs back and forth, though we have not seen a jog in the four o'clock advisory. So winds still at 65 miles an hour. It has picked up a little bit of speed. We like that as well. Northeast at 10 pressure came down another millibar, but really the pressure has not been doing much in terms of increasing the wind speed. Again, with the lower pressure, it has that potential of developing kind of a little bit quicker. It just has not been able to really tap into that. And notice a lot of those thunderstorms, let me kind of go back here on our graphics. I wanted to show you the uh, thunderstorm cloud tops. Uh, they're, they're struggling as they kind of intensify at one point and then immediately start to kind of uh, flatten out a bit. So the thunderstorms, while they do kind of get that little burst of convection, you kind of see that little increase in energy. And I'd even mention it looks like that's occurring right near the center of the storm. They're looking as though they're kind of falling apart once again. So we still have that broad overall circulation, but definitely maybe a new, not necessarily center, but maybe trying to uh, kind of consolidate all of this broad energy into its center. We will see if that is able to continue through the next advisory at seven o'clock and then again at 10. So we're just looking at the four o'clock. We'll have to wait and see what the trend is kind of over the next three hours. If it's able to maintain a little bit of strength at the center again, it wouldn't take much to th see this bumped up to a hurricane. And again, that is still in the forecast, but maybe not until early tomorrow morning. That's when they have it as a one and also good news. They've kind of taken off the table the threat of a category two. Always, as we have said, you prepare for a category stronger, but at the moment they're not even really mentioning that potential because as it has been a slow to progress to a hurricane and not even there yet, they're thinking that that intensification window to a two may be quickly closing. It'll have through the night and into early tomorrow, but as we approach tomorrow midday into the early afternoon hours, that increasing wind shear, the drier air will likely uh, stop any intensification and may already be leading to the storm weakening. Now, as far as the landfall goes, it may have sped up a little bit. At one point, we were looking at it right along the coastline at seven. Now it'll be just south of, uh, say, eastern or central Terrebonne Bay, and it may be moving inland possibly within the next 24 hours. Certainly within about 24 hours, it'll be either right near or on the coast. So four o'clock tomorrow afternoon, we will already be looking at this storm moving inland. So that also is great news. Basically, the window of opportunity for this to further strengthen is really less than 24 hours because as I said, even as it sits off the coast, we got the wind shear and dry air along our coastline and that will all hinder any further development. So the window for this to further strengthen is quickly closing and now we're probably less than 24 hours. All good things. As far as the track goes, really have not seen a major change as even the models were not indicating a major shift. By 1 a.m. on Thursday, it'll probably be about ready to exit the state and then continuing northward kind of on a trajectory that would allow for that drier air to wrap around and that would increase our uh, kind of improving weather as we go throughout the late night tomorrow and on into Thursday morning. And then we can quickly kind of get into our recovery mode, which hopefully will not be anything widespread. Here's a look at the model consensus. Again, there is a decent little spread, but all centered right around Terrebonne Bay. And that's why we did not see a big shift in the model or excuse me, in the forecasted cone from the Hurricane Center winds at least at the center. And again, it does look like that little core is trying to better organize itself. That is where you find those 65 mile an hour winds not too far to the uh, east from one of our buoys, only 25 miles an hour. So we'll also wait and see if that wind field is able to expand in size. That would indicate kind of what the winds would do here. I'm going to kind of pass up these models as we've already looked at kind of the structure of the storm, kind of keeping a lot of the rainfall either right near the center or displaced a little bit more to the west. Kind of want to talk a little bit more about the wind uh, arrival time. This really has not changed. We're still looking at probably midday Wednesday. We'll start to see those tropical storm force winds and higher gusts around even the metro area and that chance of it continues to stay on the higher side. So a probably high likelihood of seeing at least tropical storm force winds sustained as as we go throughout the 
midday, afternoon, and early evening. Now, this is just one model. This is just the GFS. But to kind of give you an idea of what the winds could be doing as the storm kind of races across, we're looking at the idea of maybe sustained winds of 40. 39 mile an hour winds is tropical storm. So we're talking kind of the 40, maybe plus mile per hour winds sustained and then gusting possibly to about 60 miles an hour. So the sustained winds at 40 with gusts up to about 60. So we're not talking the sustained winds of a hurricane by any means. We're looking more at the sustained winds of a tropical storm. Now, right near the center of wherever uh, Francine is able to make landfall and then continue northward very quickly. Again, the reason why it is still possibly a category one, even that far north is because it is going to be moving through so quickly and then out of the state with immediately improving conditions. As far as the rainfall totals go, we're not going to probably see a big change in these numbers, seven to 10 inches. And again, it'll be a fairly narrow corridor of precisely where the storm makes landfall. And it may be that some of those higher totals are just to the west instead of being on the nastier eastern side. It does look like the higher totals are going to be right near the center and possibly displaced off to the west because of that dry air kind of wrapping around. The other issue will be the increasing water levels. As you may have heard a lot of our officials saying one thing that may be working in our favor is high tide for tomorrow is all in the early morning hours. We're not expecting the water levels to reach their peak until the afternoon and evening. That will be at around low tide. So at least the tides are working in our favor to kind of decrease those numbers as much as possible. But what we're looking at as of right now, kind of at that six, maybe plus foot above ground level range from Cocodri, uh, Port Fouchon westward. So toward Morgan City, toward uh, further along Terra Bone Bay. For Barataria Bay at the moment, we're kind of looking at one to three above ground level. At the highest, we could see that four to seven. As I've said before, these totals are usually at the worst case scenario range from the National Hurricane Center. So that five to 10 is kind of their worst possible scenario. Same with everything uh, then east of the mouth of the river. So from Venice toward Shell Beach in the uh, Biloxi Marsh near the Chandeliers, Mississippi Sound in the lake. Then also we're looking at the North Shore, River Parishes, Tangy, three to five foot again at the highest levels is what we're anticipating right now. The wind shear and dry air are there and ready to go for tomorrow. As that storm nears our coastline, it will immediately start maybe by early tomorrow morning. So through the um, early morning hours before sunrise already starting to encounter some of that wind shear and it will be with it right up to the point and after from landfall. So the only thing that may help to keep it as a category one as it moves almost up to the state line would be that fast motion. If and it's not looking like that would be possible or likely right now, if it were to slow down, that's just more interaction with that wind, sh wind shear, which would help to weaken the storm even faster. And as far as the moisture goes, it may be trying to hang on to a little kind of pop pocket of deep moisture to keep that core going. But I tell you what, that dry air has really plagued this storm from day one, continues to do so, and it's only going to worsen as we get into later tomorrow. As I said, after landfall, even though we would normally have some heavy rainfall over the eastern side, notice how the dry air kind of wraps around from the southern and eastern side. This may help to start drying us out very quickly with maybe some of the more heavy rainfall from Baton Rouge out toward Lafayette. As all that moisture is still kind of contained on the northern and western side. This would just help us out with rainfall totals and just kind of giving us a break from the rainfall later tomorrow evening and night. As far as the rainfall goes now, this is kind of an area of convection that broke off of Francine earlier this morning and is now moving overhead. We do have mainly kind of a steady, light, moderate, some pockets of heavier showers. That has been the real issue with regards to our rainfall. But notice, even with that moderate rain moving through, visibilities are okay. Okay, certainly some slick roads out there, so just be careful as we continue through our Tuesday afternoon. I know a lot of kids were still in school today, so pick up kind of nasty. Winds have been manageable easterly at 10 miles an hour at Kenner, but a temperature of 77, so I'm always trying to find that silver lining. At least with the clouds and rainfall, it was not a hot day today. We are in the 70s on both sides of the lake, and the good news is once we start to see conditions improve by early Thursday morning, we actually start to get in with that kind of drier air 
air moving in on the backside. A couple of days of it feeling a little less humid. A little warmer highs will be in the mid, some upper 80s as we head into the weekend, but fairly nice. And then as we continue on into next week, may start to see a few spotty showers. So the good news is while we kind of wrap up the rainfall early on Thursday and we know we're going to see some power outages, hopefully they don't last for very long. We're not talking about an August type storm where temperatures are in the mid 90s and you have a heat index of 110 to 115 degrees. That is not going to be the case. Temperature wise, while warm, will be actually fairly manageable for those without power. So we're not talking about those uh, more extreme heat issues that we deal with during an August type storm. We actually will be a little bit more comfortable during the aftermath of Francine.